Barcelona, Real Madrid, who the hell are you trying to kid? Because we're out to show the world what we can do and what Celtic can do will be answered in the next hour or so on this wet, kind of damp, clammy Wednesday afternoon. My name's Kevin Graham and this is A Celtic State of Mind. I am joined by James James McKenzie, as usual, and we will have a third voice on. We're just having a bit of technical pro just having a bit of technical problems getting our transfer deadline day signing on <laughs> or on the bulletin here. We can hear him, but we can't actually see him. Uh, James, how are you getting on? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, nothing was right after the game last night. I was a bit disappointed, but. Looking back at the game now, watching the highlights, getting everybody else's opinion, I'm sort of changed. I'm, I'm really proud of the players last night. Well, we may as well get into, we may as well get straight into last night, eh? Because I'm sure we're going to spend the whole hour talking about eh, last night. Eh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a washing machine of emotions this morning. Eh, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that it's another heavy home defeat for a European record. Eh, I've I mean, we've had a number of them over the last 10 years. I'm disappointed that the last half hour was like a cat toying with an injured pigeon, but I'm no stupid to understand why that happens. Like, I understand that there's a difference in quality of players, so the last half hour was always going to look like that after them scoring and, and scoring soon, soon after it. I'm feeling extremely patronised by the mainstream media who have got the unlucky loser tag and gone on about, oh, he's won the first half and stuff like that. I, I'm no into that. I've had enough of that for, I'm Scottish, I've had enough of the unlu unlucky loser tag eh, for my 46 years on this planet. But most of all, James, I'm bloody excited to see this where this team's gone. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I think we showed enough in that first 54 minutes to actually say we're on the right road, eh? Yeah, I think... As I was saying earlier, when I first got out of the stadium, I was really disappointed. The emotions were high. I saw Shakhtar had beat Leipzig 4-1. I was like, oh, we're going to need to go over to Leipzig and get a result. But I've been thinking about it, calm down a bit. And you look at the sort of bigger picture, and it's, we competed with the European champions for a good 60 minutes. I think in the first half, some would even say we were the better side. And there was a big chance to start the second half, dies by the I think it might be his first touch of the ball, where they came very close to scoring. But the game is about moments, and if we take those moments, the game completely changes. God knows how the game goes for there. But the fact that we competed with them for so long because of that game, it gives me good hope going into the rest of the Champions League group. We saw Leipzig just sacked their manager. Shaq third, the next, absolutely blew them away. So... These next few games, the final game of the group is Real Madrid away. So we've just got Leipzig and Shakhtar home and away in between then. We need to make the most of those games and we have to get points. Uh, we, make, we need to get points. We move on and we do move on to next week, but we need to actually try to digest last night, James, because it was everything that you want for a Celtic part night was there beforehand. Jason Ladd, I don't know who Jason supports, but he comes in, you lost 3 nothing. Yes, we did, Jason. Thank you for reminders. And it'll be shown 3 nothing uh, in the history books. And it'll be shown that Real Madrid are a better side than Glasgow Celtic. Real Madrid are the most successful club side in the world, unlike a fake club who claim to be the most successful club side in the world. I think there's a lot of positivity in the comments today, James, so I'm going to start bringing them up. Uh, Raya Scor Scortino, that's, that's a great name, that. Best European night, in my opinion, for many a year, year zero neglect. Lubo Maestro, my either sticks that chance away, could have been so different. Kukabala, proud of the boys, but realistically, we were never going to beat Real Madrid playing that way. I'm going to actually bring that back up, Kukabara, because I slightly dis... Well, I'll just actually jump in with it. Uh, one of my friends actually says, over, over the last five years, five year or the last time we were in the Champions League and we, and we got done off Barcelona and we were getting done off PSG and, and stuff like that, Last night did actually feel different, James, for me, because we looked like a modern European side until basically that first goal. Yeah, I would completely agree with you. If this Celtic team embodies 
a lot of the main sort of factors and characteristics that teams are looking to go far in Europe and looking to push on our teams that need transformed and need a rebuild. These are the sort of characteristics that they look for their squad to embody, this fast, high-tempo style of football. And when we are taking this to the other teams and the rest of the group, I've, you know, you've got to have some high hopes, especially when we've competed with Real Madrid like that. Uh, I mean, we took it to them. And there has been times, especially under previous managers, we'll get the Brendan Rock, Rogers clacks on in at five minutes. I think I will. The Brendan Rogers clacks on in, where we looked utterly scared to be taking on these teams at Celtic Park. Uh, even Borussia Munchen Gladbach at Celtic Park, when I think back about it, we were spooked on that night. PSG, we were spooked on that night. Even taking the lead in Paris, we ended up spooked as if we didn't have the confidence in the way that we wanted to play. Last night, right for the off, we had a confidence of how we wanted to play and we looked extremely well coached for that first 55 minutes. After that, the elite level team actually then proved the, why they are an elite level team and that is no disgrace, but you can still be disappointed that uh, that actually happened. You're allowed to have those two emotions and be disappointed when you leave the stadium, disappointed after you're finished watching it. But when, when, when you have a look, we took them on in our own backyard doing what we do. And it was very, very pleasing to watch. And as people are pointing out in the in, in the comments, if we had took our chances, then the game might have swung differently. John Francis, Madrid are a top quality side, but in the grand scheme of things, it, it all came down to who was most clinical, nothing more. We matched them and that should make us more determined going forward. John Francis, who's got a nice radio head. Avatar there. Cormac Ryan. <coughs> Lots of positives to take from that performance. If we keep it up for all the other games, then it's all to play for. James, <coughs> what do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, if we took our chances, as we were saying, we could have won the game. It seems to be the story of the Celtic in Europe for so long. Even you think back to games as far as Copenhagen. If we take our chances in that game, God knows how it goes. So you, you really don't want to be thinking about the what ifs. You want to be thinking about we've got to be taking those chances. But these those chances shouldn't be what ifs. But the game should offer some form of encouragement to the fans for the rest of the group. Sorry, I was nearly choking to death there. Um, aye, it, sh it offers encouragement to to the to the rest of the group. Um, that result for Leipzig as well was a shocker. And that was a big shocker and it shows you that Shakhtar have maybe got something to prove. And uh, what's his name? Shred has got something to prove as well. Eh? What's he what's is, he's, at? Scoring, he's scoring at Celtic Park. That is written in the stars that Marion Shred scoring at Celtic Park. Ah, Paradise 63 comes in with a strange one. Took all maybe to Leipzig. I and could see that. An interesting shout. Interesting shout. Uh, Dr. Nax, I watched a bit of Leipzig versus Shakhtar and I think Celtic played better than those teams, so I will be mildly optimistic for the other games. I'm, I'm going to, here's Kuka Brothers' comment uh, about Josip Juranovic. Basically, Kuka Brothers' comment was that only Josip Juranovic would get into the, the Real Madrid side. I would go and actually say none of the Celtic team would get into the Real Madrid side, and that is no disgrace. There it is. Yeah. I, I would, I would agree with you there, Kevin. I would. It's Real Madrid, the European champions, and they've just beat us three 0 when you're playing our best football. So I'm sure that's the only answer you need. But I just want to make another point. What's going to be interesting is seeing how Shakhtar and Red Bull Lights, like how they fare when they come up against Real Madrid. Because that will be able to give us a good story as to how this group's going to go. We've got to hope that they'll suffer the same fate we did against Real Madrid, if not worse, so that we can have a chance in this group. Aye, I mean, I think last night gives us hope, but we had hope last week, James, when we spoke about the draw. I called it a Shrek draw, that the big green ogre's got a chance to marry the princess because we've got the fairy tale and we've got a chance to get out of the group just on paper. Uh, 
Last night, Juranovic, I thought Juranovic done really well last night. Basically, everything that Real Madrid done came down the left-hand side and uh, Juranovic kept Vicious Jr. very, very quiet until he scored. Um, but even then, am I being harsh on Juranovic to say he should have slid in at their first goal? I'd, I'd say, I'd say, yeah. No, we we'd had a bit of success with sliding in guys like Carter Vickers. I think it was him. They had a couple of really good sliding tackles in the first half. Who knows what happens if you have it slides in there? I think maybe he should. I uh, have uh, Jason Ladd. Juranovic screwed up cutting inside. We want our fullbacks to cut inside as well. We we do that so we that Ange Postecoglou wants to play. Um, I thought Juranovic actually kept Vicious, Vicious Jr. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Um, very, very quiet. Everything came down the other way. And I, and I want, I've seen a lot of talk again about people bl blaming, uh, blaming uh, Greg Taylor for, well, saying Greg Taylor's not up to that level because everything that Real Madrid come, everything Real Madrid done came down Greg Taylor's side. I think that is not all down to Greg Taylor. I think they target that side because Jota's there as well and they know that Jota's defensive side of the game is maybe not um, as strong as whoever, we break, whoever we're playing on the, on the, the right-hand side. I think that's where it was. But also as well, I think the boy who was playing on the left for them last night, I can't remember his name, uh, was it Val, Val, Valverde? That's Valverde. It. I thought he had a decent game. He, 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 he looks a hell of a decent player. I mean, you have to be a hell of a decent player to get into that Real Madrid side. Eh? But again, I've got Nate, I've got the two fullbacks I thought were superb last night. I thought that actually they, 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 didn't, they, they didn't let themselves do what's the other, James. Yeah, I made the point back in the summer that whenever we play in Europe, these European sides have a better call. They always target Celtic's left-hand side. And that was proven again today. But the different story was Greg Taylor put up a formidable performance. I thought Greg Taylor was pretty good on that left-hand side. But for me, my star man for that Celtic team today was Cal McGregor. If anybody in that Celtic team looked like they could rise to the challenge for a game like that, and could grab it by the scuff and he could charge Celtic on it's Cal McGregor. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal last night. And I thought Rio Hitati and Matt O'Reilly were good as well. A lot of our best plays were coming through the middle of the park. I thought, I didn't think we had enough coming for the wings. I feel like a lot of our play was breaking down on the wings. I don't know if that's just Real Madrid's quality or if we maybe had an off day on the wings. But I thought we didn't really get enough coming from the wingers. I thought Hatch Zabanovic done very well when he came off the bench, but you could maybe even say done more than the wingers that played last night. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of comments. I think we've got a few lurkers in today. Uh, Conference League is Celtic's level, let's be realistic. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be that. I don't want Celtic to be conference level. Um, Robert Little, let, Kev. Let's be realistic. Greg Taylor is not Champions League standard. There's no many players are come to Celtic Champions League ready standard. It is a learning curve for the majority of the players that come to us, and that's how they. That's how they end up in Scotland. And let's no let's no be unrealistic about that. The reason that they end up in Scotland, they end up at Celtic, is because they're no Champions League standard players, but they could develop into Champions League standard players. And what we want them today, James, is to develop into Champions League standard players at Celtic. Yeah, and we're the, where they get decent. Lie in football uh, today, we are we are a team that develops players for the Premier League and the Champions League. We, Celtic, unfortunately, don't have the funds to buy ready-made Champions League quality players. We have to do all the hard work in making them into that, as you were just saying. So we Aye, can't expect uh, to see Greg Taylor from Kilmarnock and have immediately be a Champions League player. That's our job to turn him into that. I mean, he's not, going to, he's not going to be a Champions League player playing on a plastic service in deepest, darkest air share with Liam Power. He's not going to be a Champions League player when it comes to Celtic. Uh, 
Pat Kerrigan, Irish TV says Taylor was not supported enough. I kind of back that up, and that's not a slight on Jota either. It's just that Jota, at that level, Jota's maybe got to up his defensive game a bit. And Jota was back pocketed last night, but again, that's not a slight on Jota. That's his first ever Champions League game against the European champions. Of course he's going to find it a step up for playing Ross County. Of course he's going to find it a step up for playing Rangers. It is a learning curve uh, 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 for the majority of this team. There was only two players in that team last night have played Champions League football before, and that was Cal McGregor and Joe Hart. So that's a, it's a phenomenal 45, 55 minute performance that we, that we actually gave out last night, James. You heard your money shot right away. He says Cal McGregor was the, was the uh, you, heard, you gave away your money shot. He says Cal McGregor was your top man last night. I thought Cal McGregor was absolutely outstanding last night, and he and he done the captain role really really well. And I was worried about him in that defensive midfield role, but I thought he was utterly fantastic. Yeah, he was doing everything you would want your captain to do. And a game like this, where sometimes your back's up against the wall, you need someone to sort of calm the nerves, retrieve the ball, and allow the players to go forward, which Celtic, we want to be going forward. We play attacking football. That's the way Celtic play. So you want someone to be able to allow that. So that's what Cal McGregor was doing. He was picking the ball up just in front of the defence, whether it be a battling tackle or just receiving a pass for Jens or Carter Vickers, just giving them an option. And then immediately charging forward and then he would even be sometimes getting in the box as well because I thought especially on the wings we weren't really decisive enough when we, we would have on that right hand side Juranovic and Maeda both up there in that second half and then they both didn't really know what to do and they would just go back someone make a run inside or go outside but by the time the player makes a run we take too long and the chance is gone, you've got to go back. I just didn't think we were decisive enough. And Cal McGregor, you must have noticed that, because he was charging into the middle. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal. He was absolutely phenomenal. And Paul, Paul here, I'm going to bring in Paul here's comment here. Slating anyone for performance last night is very harsh, in my honest opinion. Thought we were superb at times. And I think as we go through the team, Paul, you're going to say that. We aren't, we aren't going to criticise because we understand the bigger picture that, that, that we've got here and where we are under this trajectory of the Ange Postacoglu. And we are going to need to... The players themselves will be sitting watching the tape today going... All oh, right, uh, they'll be sitting watching the tape today, and the, the, themselves will be getting told places where they've got to improve. But that's why that's why I think for for the first time since Martin O'Neill, we've got a European level coach. That's what I'm really thinking this morning. And I've got I've, for the first time I've probably I, since O'Neill and maybe Rogers who improved certain players to a certain level, we've actually got a coach there and a manager there that could improve players to a European standard that we actually need. Um, the, the, the two centre halves, James Cameron Carter Vickers. Again, if you've been really, really harsh, the, the setting goal that you have in uh, Yakamakis collided on the halfway line. I thought Cameron Carter Vickers was, was fine at that level, he never looked out of his depth at any point, and so did uh, Moritz Jens uh, again. Done nothing wrong on the night. He was unlucky, he didn't get that tone. The, the ball sort of broke for Modric, Modric for the setting goal. Uh, but again, he done, I thought the two centre halves done really, really well. And again, they didn't look completely exposed against Europe's best side. Yeah, I didn't think there was sort of too much you could really stick in the centre backs. I think, I can't remember if it was the second or the third goal where Maurice Jens tries to pass out for the back. I think that might be where someone collides in the halfway line. Uh, can't, I can't remember if it was second or third goal. That's if you're really nitpicking, you would pick that out. But against top level sides, you are going to make mistakes against teams of that quality. Now, I thought for the most part they were pretty formidable, but then you had the eventual sort of collapse in the last half an hour. Which, when you've got players of that quality coming at you, banging on the door for sixty odd minutes, it's no surprise that the goal's going to come eventually. No, it wasn't any. No, it was disappointing that the goals eventually did come. Joe Hart again done what you would expect a competent goalkeeper to actually do. He was never at any point. Never at any point when we were completely under the cosh, which is very, 
good, even though even though they they, they end up score line, and we can't argue with the score line. They took the three chances. We didn't. We didn't take any chances that we took. Uh, but there wasn't any time that we looked under the cosh as J- as Daniel F comes in and actually says, if this was a Brendan Rodgers team, we'd have been scudded six or seven no. Aye, there is. You're talking for historical fact there, Danielle. I'm not. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue with that. We were never under the cosh at any point last night, and we looked like we belonged at that level for a certain period of time. There's going to be. You look at the other results over Europe. But Borussia Dortmund spanking a uh, Copenhagen three nothing. We're a pot four side, and you'll see pot four sides getting a doing for teams for the top five leagues. That's what happens in the Champions League, and that's what happened to us last night. And we've got to take the positives from it. We've already spoke about Cal McGregor being utterly fantastic. One again, who I thought was utterly fantastic in the first half, Matt O'Reilly. Matt O'Reilly, and I, I was watching it with my dad, James, and I turned and said to my dad, "I we're no holding on to him, are we?" Because he, it was almost as if for those first fifty-four minutes that it was almost as if he was playing in the domestic game. He was that good. It didn't they phase him whatsoever that he was playing that he was playing the European champions. And it was superb. Yeah, what makes it even more remarkable about how Matt O'Reilly was one of our top performers today was when you consider the fact that just in January, Matt O'Reilly was playing for MK Dons in the English League One. And now Fast forward to September, and now he's one of the best players in the park when Celtic play Real Madrid. I thought it wasn't even just the attacking side of things, either the creative side of things. I thought even defensively, he'd done his job. He'd done what you'd expect from a Celtic player to do against a team like Real Madrid. And that's just the story of Matt O'Reilly's time at Celtic. He's, I can't really think of a game where he's put a foot wrong. He's usually always a 7 out of 10 performance, much like Cal McGregor. And as he said, I can't see us keeping a hold of him for much longer. After six months at the club, you've got teams like Borussia Dortmund and Manchester United apparently sniffing around for him, amongst others. So we'll just need to see what happens to him. But I can see players going in January. If there's going to be a time where players leave, I can see either January or next summer, players are definitely going to leave, I think. Hopefully not, but then again, they're on the they're on the bigger stage, they're on the biggest stage in European football, and if they're doing well, that usually means that Celtic are doing well, and that's good for everybody. Um, the other midfielder on the night, Rio Atati, again, he gets caught with the ball in Scotland quite a bit, but he never got caught with the ball at any point last night. His work rate was phenomenal. He played a one-time pass out to Jota in the first half, which will probably be on UEFA's socials for, for ages, to, for days and days to come. Again, it looked like he was born to actually play in the Champions League. Yeah, he was absolutely phenomenal. £1.7 million, pounds, I think, was the fee we paid for Rio Hitati. And I've got a, a Champions League quality player. We were just talking about that earlier. Celtic are the team that need to develop Champions League quality players. Well, I think we might have maybe even signed a Champions League quality player on arrival when we got Rio Atati, as he was absolutely phenomenal today. He's been absolutely phenomenal for ages since he's joined Celtic. So, yeah, I play was absolutely phenomenal. Steve, Stephen Murray comes in and says, for him, Atati for was our best player. I think I think there was a number of candidates for for the best player and, and we are only what we are only going to have a look at this in, the, in like in that 54 minutes we're only looking at that first 54 minutes because we know we all know what happened after it the golfing quality showed after it and so but we have to take some of the positives out of it and that's what the club will be doing that's what Ange Postacoglu will be doing but also Ange Postacoglu will be probably be with uh, I mean, you saw him after the game. Ange Postacoglu will be with Steve O'Matt here. Can't prescribe to this birthday card nonsense of it's OK, it's Real Madrid, etc. They are immense in defending champs, but that doesn't mean you can't be annoyed at, at losing. This is what I was talking about, James, at the start, that I'm getting completely patronised with this unlucky losers rubbish. And Ange Postacoglu had none of it after the game last night. Absolutely, he wasn't having any of it whatsoever. He's gone, no, we can do better. 
we're, we've lost three nothing. And that's it. It's in the record books that we've lost three nothing. Doesn't matter how good that we've played, we've got things that we need to improve on. And that's how Ange Postacoglu will be sitting looking at it today and last night. He will be looking at that. He will be annoyed at losing, just as the same as I'm disappointed at losing three nothing. Uh, for me, I want Celtic to actually compete in Europe. And maybe competing in Europe at this stage is not losing three goals, is maybe getting beat one none of these top elite sides. But we can be disappointed and annoyed that we've actually lost the game while like praising the performances of the players. Yeah, and he'll have come over from Japan for nights exactly like last night. He'll have come over to Celtic for the big occasion for teams like Real Madrid to come calling at Celtic Park because he's all about just sort of building his legacy and playing against these bigger teams and just showcasing his football to the world. So he, he would have hoped, he would have done everything for a win today. He will see every single game as a winnable game because he believes in his football. And he, he won't be happy with that result. He would have, he would have hoped for something a bit more positive on the scoreline front, but I'm sure he can't knock the player's performance. He won't knock the player's performance, but it's his job as the leader of that squad, as a guy who's there to improve them, to point out their failings on the night. And even though it's not, it's not up to me to point, it's not, it's not to me to point out their failings. I'm a, I'm a failed Sunday league football player, and like a terrible poet who sits here on a Wednesday afternoon talking about, like talking about my emotions or watching football. I very, very rarely. Very, very rarely I actually talk about tactics because I know nothing about tactics. I actually know so at all about tactics, eh? But Hans Postacoglu knows about tactics. Hans Postacoglu knows how to actually, like, create a side. So he will be disappointed today and he will pick up the players. And for us, us fans to say that the players done us proud for a certain period last night is true. But we all know that there's got to be vast improvements to, to actually go. Aye, Atati last night looked really, really good. Um, what about, let, let's go up front, uh, Abada. Let, let's go, Leo Abada, he missed the chance in the first half. Well, he missed two chances in the first half. He missed the chance in the first 38 seconds. Then he, then he missed the other chance after Jota played a absolutely phenomenal ball. <laughs> what are these balls at like? It should have came, it should have its own only fans page actually a ball like that. Him and Artati's pass should actually be behind a paywall. They were that good. Um a bad I thought he was unlucky to actually I thought he was unlucky to come off. I thought he was unlucky to get the, the tactical substitution. Yeah I, I, I don't know if I would agree with that. I wasn't as I said earlier on I thought when the two wingers were running at their man, I didn't think they were sort of incisive enough. They didn't act as quickly as you would well I would have liked them to I thought as you were saying Jot had a couple of good passes but I, I didn't think we acted quick enough and against our team like Real Madrid you can't play safe you've got to you've got to take the chances you've got to sort of play I don't know then a bit less direct to try and get the chances against you this because they're going to be so well set up you know the chances aren't going to come easy you've got to make them yourself you have got to make them myself. Right, to take everybody. The risks. That's what I'm trying to say. We've, We've got, got to, to take the risks. risks. And I think that's what we showed in the first half that we were willing to take the risks to play our modern football and to take those risks. Whereas under the last couple of years we've been kind of stagnated and we've actually sat there and waiting on these teams to come out come in. Now, if you were paying attention at the start, everybody, oh everybody, please hit like as well. I need to beat Laura this week, so go and, go and hit like and subscribe and like get me our 300 likes. I mean, I won't maybe I should promise to do this in a mankini or something if I get 400 likes. Eh? Like, but what's that guy? What's his name? Was it Fogan or whatever his name is? That's what he does. Eh? I do stuff like that, but um, there's no way. I give me 400 likes or I will do this in a mankini, right? <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's what I should actually do. Right, I say at the start, if he's were all paying attention, that we had a third voice. And he has now got his camera sorted and he is ready to join us. Our deadline day sign-in, which is Mr John Hughes Jr. John, welcome to our Celtic State of Mind. 
Thanks very much, Kev. Yeah, no, good to be here. Uh, apologies for that. The text a bit ancient, much like myself. Uh, yeah, so, no, we weren't getting connected up. I had to use the iPhone in the end. Oh, that's no problem. We've all, we've all had day problems, especially since we've came to do it from home at one point or another. Uh, I mean, you look at John Paul Mason, he just keeps on, he just keeps on getting the, the Herms delivery guy chatting his door when he's actually on live <laughs> and stuff like that. Eh? So it happens to the best of us, John. John, me and, me and James have been speaking about uh, last night. What was your overall feelings of last night? I've got a feeling of disappointment and immense pride. And I'm struggling to compute the two. Uh, yeah, not so much disappointment. It's, it's an unfortunate uh, result, but at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't really change anything. I mean, the outcome, you know, I thought that they were going to score two goals. I thought, therefore, we'd need to score three at least. Didn't see that as being very likely. I was hoping that that would uh, transpire, but obviously that wasn't the case. Um, although it could well have been. Uh, but it doesn't, for me, it doesn't change anything. Um, you know, uh, we are not our competition. You know, they are, they are a level above. They are not our competition. That's not where we need to be focused. It's the next couple of games, really, uh, where we need to be seeing results, uh, Leipzig and Shakhtar. So that's the games we need to be seeing results. It was a great game. I really enjoyed it, uh, certain parts of it anyway, the first half, mainly. Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it wasn't to be. But look, hasn't changed my opinion on anything in terms of this team. The, the series of events that have transpired in order to bring this team together are so unlikely with this manager as well. They are so unlikely that I believe that they're destined to go on and do great things. And what the level of those great things remains to be seen. Um, but essentially, you know, I, this, is, this is just a jumping off point for us. Um, so, look, we know when we are now against the, the best team in Europe. Uh, we put in a sensational first half performance, I thought. Well, first 40 minutes, as I should have scored on 40. Uh, but, uh, you know, for that, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've covered all this already, but the chances that we had, I mean, I counted half a dozen solid chances, um, three very, very good chances, two of which should have been goals straight off. Um, so, you know, and you look at their goals as well, and I don't know if you've covered this already, Ken, uh, Ken so you know, stop me if you have. Um, but if you look at the breakdown of their goals as well, um, you know, I think we were unfortunate, not unlucky, but unfortunate with the first two, uh, and the third one was just bad marking. But, you know, we were unfortunate. Um, I don't know. If, you know, if you discussed those already. No, we haven't discovered that they discussed the goals. I thought the first goal, I did say to James, it's the only one that we have covered. I thought the first goal, um, if I was being really, really critical of Josip Juranovic, I thought he might have gone to ground. To, instead, he sort of hung back a bit. But then that's me being extremely critical. No, I was going to make exactly the same comment. Two things. First of all, he checks his run initially. Uh, this is hypercritical now. Oh, it is. All <laughs> this is all happening in a split second. So he checks his run initially to check for the offside. And then, despite the fact that it was a sensational ball, in fact, I think it was the same ball that put Liverpool out, wasn't it? So, despite Aye. the fact um, it was a sensational ball from essentially a guy who, uh, uh, Cal Verde, who I thought was their best player on the night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely pinpoint beautiful ball, despite the fact that uh, Juranovic gets within an inch of taking the block. And mm -hmm. he, he, you say he checks his run, his last two steps are checking his speed because he obviously, in his head, he's thinking he doesn't want to kick the boy up in the air and he doesn't want to get dummied. But, you know, if he goes to the ground, if he puts his foot out, he does take him. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, now, lately, you know, lately, who does it would have been a pen. Because you know that at that pace he's going to clatter the boy, you know. But it was inches. Despite all that, it was an inch away, you know. So it was so incredibly close, and you know. And again, you know, with the second goal, uh, you don't mind if I jump ahead. Can aye, we'll, do, we'll uh, go to the goals. Aye, we'll just go to the well, goals. Well, the, the the second goal again. I mean, I heard a commentator this morning saying. You know, Chimene, I think that's his pronunciation. He's a £72 million player. You know, wins a 50-50 battle in the midfield and that states off the move for Hazard. No, he didn't. 
he did not. Uh, big Cat and Vickers won that ball. But the problem was that Jack and Marcus was tackling the boy at the same time. So they were both in on the tackle. Uh, Cat and Vickers wins the tackle. It ricochets off Jack and Marcus's studs, falls out of the park the hazard, who's then got the ends on the back foot running straight at him. So he just glides past him. Then we've got both our full backs retreating at full pace because uh, Hazard has got options on both sides. And he goes with Modric, um, who's, you know, not a bad player. Um, he goes with Modric. And despite that, Jens gets back, puts his foot in, nearly gets the clearance again. After Taylor shows on the inside, Jens gets back, puts his foot in, and the ricochet falls to Modric, who, handy enough, finished to be fair, you know. Uh, the outside of his right foot seems to be something of a wound, but you know, very, very unfortunate. Again, I bet you know, you could ask why Carter Vickers was up making tackles in the halfway line, uh, but that's just the way. I mean, James was <coughs> far behind them, the two most deep lying players were both the fullbacks, uh, and they were left completely exposed. So, you know, like, uh, we were unfortunate, we were unfortunate. It's an players. interesting point you make there, John, because. In the first half, Callum McGregor shouted at Cameron Carter, Vickers or Jens to push up. There was a ball played in the middle of the park to Benzema when he was on the park. And I was Jens was like five yards away. And you could see Callum McGregor telling him, you should be there. So maybe when you actually when I saw that in the setting half and when it's led up to the setting goal, I wasn't surprised that Cameron Carter, Vickers was making that challenge on the halfway line because that's obviously what what they've been told to do. James, what, what was your thoughts about the second goal? Um basically I agree with the, the two of you. It comes because of the because of the ricochet from the Carter Vickers tackle. And you can't really put too much blame or too much criticism on the fullbacks or gains for that glare because it's just unfortunate the way the ball fell. And if there's a loose ball falls to a player for a team like Real Madrid, they're gonna take their chances. It's just a given at this sort of stage of football. So I can't, you can't really put too much of a blame on anyone. You would really be nitpicking to try and lay blame on anyone. Um, the third goal, John, um, for me, it's a great ball for Tony Cruz, was it? It was Cruz that actually played the ball. Another another ball that should have been actually be behind a payroll, uh, a paywall. Um <laughs> I don't think Greg Taylor could do anything at all. It was just such a great ball and he's caught. And again, the guy in the middle, I think Josef Juranovic is maybe posted missing at that point. But again, it's the quality of the ball that actually that actually causes that goal. And we didn't face, that, yeah. we didn't face that quality many times. Well, I mean, I don't know about that because, you know, I watched it back a couple of times because I thought that, Taylor should have done better. That was my initial thought. Um, and then you're thinking, okay, it was a sensational ball. Uh, it was, what was it, Chris to Carvalho to, um, and then to Hazard. Um, so once that ball's through, you're struggling, basically. But both, both the centre-halves push up exactly as they're supposed to. Right? So the centre-halves get a perfect line. Now, Taylor's looking right at them. So he decides to stay with his man. If he pushes up with the centre halves, he's five yards offside. Aye. You know, so no, that, that was the only one that I didn't think was unfortunate. I thought that was uh, poor by, by Taylor. And I'm not trying to give Taylor a hard time because uh, he had, you know, he had a, a fairly good night as far as I'm concerned. He, he was, um, you know, I mean, he was up against two sensational players. He wasn't getting much help. Um, you know, uh, on that side from Jota defensively, so he was up against two sensational players, uh, and he tried his heart out all night. He played some sensational balls, uh, one ball out of defence from the touchline that had uh, Jackie Marcus in the end it chasing down Militao. Um, and you know, Jackie Marcus did such a good job of chasing down Militao, he went off at half time to tell his mommy about the big boy, don't you? <laughs> you know, so. It was, uh, and they brought in uh, the other fella. Uh, now, you know, Jack and Marcus was making mincemeat of that boy all night. But, you know, Greg Taylor did very well, but he was absolutely, in my view, completely at fault for that goal. And you could see the centre-halves, so you could see them pushing out. You're the full-back, you've got to go 
you've got to go with him. You've got to trust the line, you know. Uh, and he, he didn't know who was behind him. He can only see the man in front of him, and he knew the man in front of him was offside if he moved. So, nah, for me, uh, that's the tale at all for that one. But look, again, you know, these are sensational players you're playing against. These are the best in the world, you know. And when they're hitting diagonal balls, they don't miss, you know, the, and the guy that receives them receives them perfectly and then puts in another perfect ball, you know. I know. So, you know, what are you supposed to do about it? But, you know, again, I'm sorry I missed the conversation about the first half because I thought we were absolutely sensational. Um, and I have no idea. I still, I couldn't work out what we think we're doing. I couldn't work out what the tactics were. Because at one point in that first half, our entire midfield was standing completely unmarked. I think they were looking. They were looking around each other, going, "What's going on here? Why have we got so many options and so much space?" You know, and uh, they were just picking passes all over the show, and we were dominating them. And of course, that changed eventually. But you know, it was a sensational first half of our song. You know, and they were showing us respect. Eventually, mm-hmm. too much respect, not the other way around, not the way it normally goes. You know, but we are scared of them. You know, I think they were scared of us. They scared of what we could do potentially. Uh, and they were sitting off us, and that's, you know, as I think they came to realise, you know, late in the first half and in the second half, you don't want to sell off us. That's the worst possible thing you can do, you know, because we will steamroll them. Um, so, you know, again, uh, fantastic first half. Uh, you know, the, the goals were unfortunate, apart from one. Doesn't change my opinion. I think we're going places. I think this is going to be a sensational season. I think we've got an inspirational manager. Um, I, I think we have done the best transfer business I can possibly imagine us ever doing. I can't even see it being repeated. Uh, ridiculous how good these guys are. For peanuts, we have robbed and pillaged all around Europe and Asia. Uh, and we have got these guys for absolutely nothing. Uh, and some of them are just sensational. They're world class. You look at Hitati last night. You see that pass on the volley? Aye. Right across the pitch, oh, how do you point? Sometimes he can't make a five-yard pass, we give him a 50-yard pass, you know, and uh, he's absolutely sensational, and it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant, um, you know. I, I, find, I find that Tony Cruz after the game says, James, that uh, they knew that they had to survive the first 25 minutes, they gave us ultimate respect. You go back to Bodo Glint last year, and they didn't give us any respect. They attacked us from the off, caught us off, caught us off guard, and we were one nothing down inside five or six minutes. Do you think this is a sign that we? I, mean, I say it's right at the start. What can Celtic do in Europe? What can we do? Do you think last night you saw in that first twenty-five minutes that because Posta Coglu's reputation has grown in Europe? that people within the game, like Ange Alti, know about Ange Postacoglu, knew what he was going to, aff- going, to, going to experience last night. Also, the fact that that's the first time Ange has actually brought a side to Celtic Park and actually had a victory, which is what I found a bizarre start. Uh, do you think that's a sign that we're getting the respect that we deserve? And I'll, I'll, I'll speak about Yakimakis, but do you think that's a sign that we're going to start getting the respect that we deserve? But that could work a different way for us as well over the ne- over the next two games. Yeah, I think when you look at the sort of pre-match press conferences, you've got guys like Carlo Angelotti, one of the best managers of all time. And you've got players like Vinicius Jr., one of the best players on the planet, talking about how they have to be wary of the threat that the Celtic pose. That shows... Angelotti will have had it drilled into those players how we're going to be playing the football. And as John was saying earlier, we made them respect us because we came at them the same way, as he said, Bodo Glunt did when we played them in the Europa League. And it offered a lot of encouraging signs that we could maybe make a splash in this group. Second or third could really be a possibility in this group. You want to be pushing for second, obviously. But even third place looks like a real, real possibility. It is a real, I mean, next week now is a massive game. Next week becomes an absolute massive game. Probably a a truer reflection, John, of yeah. where we are. Is Will it be yeah. a truer reflection of where we are? Well, it has up? to be because that, that's our competition. Now, that said, I'm a bit concerned. I, I know Leipzig haven't been playing well, but I'm a bit concerned. That, well, I suppose you're concerned that you, you, 
more enthused or more optimistic by that result because Shakhtar shouldn't be beating anyone 4 1. They are absolute bits. Uh, so, you know, the fact that they pulled out that result is either, you know, is a, a condemnation of Leipzig, who obviously sacked their manager as a result, or it's telling us that, you know, Shakhtar are a much bigger threat than we thought they were. The bad news is, looks like there's some decent managers in for the Leipzig job, George. I just hope they take their time appointing them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, these are, this is our competition now coming up. You know, um, that was a great game last night, great run out, and I think um, Madrid felt the same way because, you know, I was listening to this on Spanish commentators afterwards. Nobody attacks them like that. Nobody plays football against them like that, you know, with, with such abandon, you know, and, and such, you know, uh, persistence. You know, um, so uh, and uh, so they they would have they got real uh, benefit from that because they had to produce real moments of skill um, and magic in order to dig themselves out of the hole that they made for themselves in the first forty minutes. But no, definitely Shakhtar and Leipzig are where we are at, and um, there's always the danger, of course, that you know we then we go on to disappoint. I'm not expecting this team to disappoint us. You know, I, I think. This team plays to its level. You know, I don't think we're underperforming or overperforming. I think we're performing at the level we should be at with the players that we have. So I think we'll find a level. Um, you know, and I I think that level in this group um, could easily be second place. You know, obviously we'd settle for third, but you know I think it could and should be second place. I think we're we're good enough. You know, I don't, I don't think we should fear anything from Leipzig or Shakhtar. I think this team uh, has a long way to go uh, and a lot to offer. Uh, and I think that, you know, we have some sensational players of our own uh, and we have a coach with vision and uh, a particular way of playing uh, which could not more encapsulate the Celtic way. Uh, it's a thing of beauty. So I absolutely love to see it. Love to see it. You know, they're a great team to watch. You know, you give me that. I'll take that 3 nil all day going full out against uh, Madrid uh, rather than digging in and trying to bore you to death, you know, trying to eke out a result for nil-nil. If I wanted to watch that, I'd go and watch Hamilton or something, you know, uh, you know we're, we're the Celtic, so, you know, again, I am happy for us to go out and play that way. Uh, I, I think we've got a great squad and a great manager and I expect us to do well in this group and I certainly hope that's the case. Completely agree. Itself, I completely agree with you there, John. I would rather play that style of football than just get part of the bus and end up getting beat. End up still getting a tanker anyway. End, end up still getting bet anyway. The stream I watched it on last night was CBS America. And it was quite obviously the commentators haven't really watched Celtic. They were basically there to comment on Real Madrid, James. Eh? And they were really, really surprised with the way that Celtic played football. They were like, Wow. That this team has really taken it to Real Madrid. Real Madrid, as, as, just as you say there, Johnny, they were going, Real Madrid didn't usually face this, this, this type of game in, in, in Europe. The teams are usually sitting in in that. Eh? James, the next two games against Shakhtar and, and Leipzig, um, do you think they are going to be a more reflective of where we are in Europe? And last night, we need to build on last night. Eh? We do yeah, need these, to build on last night. These are the teams that you would think should be around our level. So we, we need to make our mark at this sort of level. These are the teams that we should be beating. These games, ultimately for me, these are the games that are going to make or break the group because we're not going to get a result away to Real Madrid in the last game of the group. These are the games that decide where we're going to be playing in the following, following January. Are we going to be in the Champions League, Europa League or no European football? I think that Shakhtar game stunned everybody. But... Again, Leipzig, they haven't really been the best to form in the Bundesliga. I think someone in the comments there said they have one win from five to start the Bundesliga season, which, if you're looking at a team, one win out of five games in a top five league. Celtic, we really need to be making a go of that. I don't think it's Leipzig. They're usually quite good. Look at how they're playing right now. We've got to make a go at them. And on, Ukraine, James, Rangers beat them last year and they were right exactly, rotten. Exactly. They, tactically, they just weren't very good. And if you look at Shakhtar Donetsk, I think I've made the point quite a few times now, but the players will be playing for a lot of pride considering what is currently going on in their nation. So that could be a driver factor that push them on, much like the Ukraine team did against Scotland at the international football level. Usually did against Joshua. 
they're just trying to restore some sort of pride and happiness to the nation. So there will be a lot of fight coming for those shat dad the next players, but we just need to match it. I'm wondering what Scotland's done to annoy Luca Modric. I'm really are. I'm actually wondering what we've done to annoy him, eh? Because that's twice that he's been utterly fantastic in Glasgow. James, we mentioned Yakamakis and Lawrence McNeil comes in and says Yakamakis put everything in and held up play well, but didn't have the pace to trouble trouble a top side. John mentioned James that the. He gave that centre half in the first half an absolute shoeing about the place. The guy didn't ken what had happened. He was an utter pest. But again, you could see, and what I agree with Lawrence say, there is a sort of lack of pace here. And even though we could say he had a good good game, Yakamakis is there to score goals. And he didn't really get any chances to score goals. But overall, I was really more impressed with his play outside the box last night. And that's the first time I've been impressed with his play outside the box for quite a little while. He showed yeah. me more than what I expected for him, actually. He surprised me. Well, I really wanted Kyogo to start this game. And I think Yakimakis, yes, he was causing centre backs sort of a bit of trouble getting stuck in about them, but he wasn't really getting many chances in front of the goal, which ultimately is what you're wanting your striker to do. Which I think Kyogo would have offered a different dynamic. I think we could have brought Kyogo on a bit sooner. I don't think we brought him on until around maybe late 60s, 70 minutes, around about that mark. But Yakimakis, I thought it was a, a standard enough performance. But I think I would have preferred to see Kyogo start. And if Kyogo is fit... James, can I just bounce a point on that point? Sorry, what did you think, lads, about the substitutions? Uh, and the timing of the substitutions, because there's an argument there, obviously, as you just uh, pointed out, James, there's an argument that we were clearly, you know, tiring, you know, even before the 55th, uh, the first goal, uh, but, you know, certainly, we usually bring the subs on in 60, we brought them on in 70, you know, so uh, I was I was a bit confused by that. What were your thoughts on that? You've got to make the changes after the first goal, because... Oh, that that's clearly right because right after we conceded the first goal, we conceded the second goal. It was clear the legs were sort of going a bit, and the substitutions had to be made. I think it should have been done a bit sooner. Which the only sort of minor criticism people had at Angel last season was maybe the substitutions were running a bit late, and that's a very minor criticism. And it sort of creeped in again. The substitutions could be made a bit sooner, but again, it is just maybe nitpicking, just trying to find something to criticise. I, 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 I didn't get the the Abada one at half time. I, I, I do not get that one at half time, especially especially tactically. And I probably agree with you. The game's gone by the time we make the three substitutions. The game, the, the game, the, the game is away at that point. Madrid have got the slippers on at that point, and I don't think whoever we were going to bring on was going to make any changes. I think Kaskabanovic when he came on actually. Sh- came on with a point to prove yeah. and I'm really looking forward to him starting on Saturday against Livingston because I think he will get a start against Livingston on Saturday um, yeah. I, I, again he could, I think he could have made the changes but I think the fact that we lost that the goals in bunches John mm-hmm. we lost that there was three minutes between them if there's own, if there's like if we go past three, three if we get to 65 and it's still one nothing then you make these substitutions hoping, hoping to make a hoping to make a like impression. But the fact that we've that we've lost two goals in three minutes, I think makes any sort of plans when he was going to make the substitutions null and void, really. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a fair point. Uh, no, I, I can see why a bad went off. Uh, to be honest, tactically, I, I felt that was the, the right move. I, I, I heard this morning as one of the uh, stats boys will be able to help me out with this, but. Uh, I think so. He lost something like eighty-five percent of his jewels. Someone was saying, uh, which is an unbelievably high number. Um, and you know, again, with the chances he had, um, you know, that, that first chance that he missed should have buried it. That big GG. Uh, he doesn't even know. Uh, well, he should have known that the defender was down behind him because I watched it back a few times, and the boy goes down very, very early. So Jack and Marcus. Could easily have stopped that table and swivelled and hit it. Now, was he at a better angle? No, I think you know laying it off was probably the right thing to do. You get you get more target to hit from that angle, but you know he should have buried that. And then he had one, you know, from the the Jota 
pass. What a pass. Mm -hmm. What an absolute peach of a ball. What a beautiful thing that was to see. Just fantastic pass. And um but you know that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, finish you can only expect from you know an absolutely top striker because he's got a man closing him down, he's 30 yards out, the goalie's coming out to him, you know, he's got very limited options there, you're expecting. So, you know, that's a Henrik Larson moment. Um, you know, and Abada is not that. Uh, and um, you know, ultimately that you know just shoots it right in his hands, you know, it was a weak shot. Um, and he had a couple of other moments, you know. But the good news for Abada is we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis and uh, uh, we, Leo Abada, can go and save money by going to live in Barisic's house because Barisic can't see him. <laughs> so, you know, he, he's lucky that way. Uh, but, you know, in terms of this game, I was happy enough to see him get off at half time. I don't think he contributed that much. You can see what Maeda was going to do. But then Maeda came on and broke my heart. <laughs> what was that? What was that? I know if you're standing leg, big man, come on. It's got to do better than that. That's an absolute joke. You know, but I don't care. I know everyone's saying, because, you know, you're all on the podcast. You're all very nice. And, you know, everyone's saying, oh, you can't blame the player. And he's only just gone, do me a favour. You're just gone. You're two yards out. You're two yards out and you're basically an open goal. That's got to go. That has got to go. That is unacceptable at any level. Uh -huh. I completely, so, I, I completely agree with you there, John. Like yeah. Roddy McDonald, Abada would have buried that Maeda chance. I think uh, Yakamakis would have buried it as well. They wouldn't have actually fought twice. But the point I want to make there, John, and I'll, I'll put this to James as well, Maeda would miss that chance against Ross County as well. Yeah. It's not because he's playing Real Madrid. He would miss that chance again. He has missed chances like that against Motherwell, Ross County and stuff like that. So these people say, oh, you need to take your chances against Real Madrid. Well, we need to take them against every team because that when you saw Maeda doing that, James, it wasn't any surprise to me. I love the fella. I love what he, he, he's like a human dynamo. I do love him, but I know that he's got a miss like that in him. Yeah, it's, everybody's always thought that of Maeda. He's, I think he might have had more assists than goals in a Celtic shirt. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you get the same thing with Kyogo as well. He takes a couple of chances to get his goal. He does miss a lot of sitters, but especially last season. And just on what John was saying about the substitution, I think on paper, bringing on Maeda was the right substitution. I think needed a bit more pace, maybe a bit more intent going down that wing. So on paper, it was the right result. It was the right substitute. But maybe the chance just came on too early in the half. But then again, he is, he's a striker. You'd expect it to... But any of those chances if you're a forward and um, I don't even I don't even want to think about how the result would went if we scored that on one goal. Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing, too early, you know, how long an introduction do you need? You know, are, are you a debutant's ball? Do you want a formal introduction? Do you know what I mean? How how long do you need on the pitch? You yeah, know, it's, it's, like, it's a tapping. <laughs> he has his own leg, it's a tapping, come on. Oh no. no. I, I'm, I'm waiting on Brown Wara to come in, James, and tell you that, uh, that Maeda's not a striker that he scored all his goals for the left wing because Brown Wara had been telling that, tell us that for months and months after they signed. I'm going to bring up a comment with Pigeon M here. A bad in two or three years will be will be a great player. I think the occasion got to him last night, John. And I think when he was bursting through on goal, if that was a domestic league game, he's taken an off touch and he's he's gone in. But when he sees a big centre half coming, he's gone, yeah. oh no, it's a Real Madrid centre half, it's coming across to me. He's only 20. I think last night maybe was just a wee bit too much for him. But again, I'm not going to criticise him for that. Listen, uh, that, that's a big moment. Uh, and uh, it's not an easy chance. Not an easy chance. We're sitting talking about my head missing a tap in, so we can hardly be criticising a bad for missing one from 30 yards out. With someone closing them down and the goalie's still to beat, uh, running at full pace, you know. So that that's a, you know, I I don't want to criticise the boy unnecessarily. It, you know, he's a great player. He's proved that domestically. He's getting better and better. You know, I mean, he's like a badder the architect assassin because you know he creates a beautiful space for you and then puts two in your head. You know, uh, just to put you to sleep. So you know, he has been doing that for us and posting in at that back post. Uh, for the last season, and he has been sensationally good at it. 
you know, he finds and creates those spaces. He's been great. But that wasn't it wasn't that kind of game last night. It was never going to be that kind of game. You know, so those chances for you know at this level, you know, you are expected to take them. But I mean, you know, at the rare, if that was a real Madrid striker striker, you'd expect him to take that. I don't think we're really expecting um you know well. but I didn't take that. I think it's a difficult chance and um, you know, look, I'm not disputing the boy's a good player. I think he's great. Uh, I really, really like him. I think he's been sensational for us. And another ridiculous buy. Ridiculous buy. What was he? A million and a half, something like that. You know, uh, so, I mean, you know, as far as value for money goes, sensational. Sensational and great player. But, you know, that game last night was next level. You know, and these things, you know, are sent to test the players. And, um, you know, it is next level and he's got, you know, he's going to get better. Uh, he's a young boy and he's going to get better. I mean, we have sent people out on loan who have been at the club far, far longer um, and, uh, you know, hoping that they will improve. Uh, he's improving in the first team in real time, you know. So, you know, no criticisms there at all. It wasn't his night last night, but there'll be other nights to come. Michael Ross points out, John, all strikers miss chances and Graham Martin comes in. Hazard missed nearly the same chance as, Ma as Maeda in the first half. As well, he did. So, he did. And I, I was criticizing the Hazard the same way, saying, What an absolute, what a miss that was. Then he, the ground. then he scored his first Champions League goal in 651 days in the oh. second half. Yeah, uh, yeah. Where's, um, we've been on for an hour, man, and it, it's went great, it's absolutely went brilliant. Can I bring up my commentary, Desmond, here. He's All right, I'll, right, I'll, we're, I'll, talking about, we're talking about Abada getting subbed off at half-time, Desmond said he would have rather Callum McGregor got subbed off. Oh, yeah, come come on, I don't come see on you, Desmond. Don't there you that. go. Oh. Nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. Callum McGregor ran some like 13 and a half kilometres. He was sensational all night. Yes, he misplaced about two passes. He was absolutely brilliant. That's... He controlled that midfield for the most. That's a nonsense comment. That is a nonsense comment. I think he's been buzzing. Felt that pens, mate. Uh, that that is a nonsense. <laughs> that is a nonsense call. John Roddy's asking. You've got your late dad's Lisbon Lions blazer behind you there, eh? Yeah, um, yeah. Everybody, everybody on Axon showed big love to your dad when when he passed away, and it's, it's great to have yeah. you in the team, man. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's um... aye. The audience are loving you on the radio. Everyone's asking to get you back on as well. Which, well he's going to, he's going to be on every Wednesday. He's going to be on every Wednesday with us, John. Uh, so. I'm going to be on every Wednesday. And I'm trying not going to try and get emotional every Wednesday, but I'll, I'll be on every Wednesday if I can. And, uh, no. No, it was a, I appreciate all the love, obviously, for Dad. It was absolutely fantastic. It was unbelievably uh, comforting and great to see and, and, great, and great to acknowledge. I thought my dad, you know, I thought I was sort of well tuned into these things and I knew how popular he was, but I was wrong about that. Um, you know, so you know, there's a lot of love from out there. It's a beautiful town, uh, and I very much appreciate it. And I think we'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Thank you for hitting the likes. And remember, everybody, just don't be bams to each other, eh? Hail, hail. <laughs>